Greetings Earthlings, and welcome to Trick Bricks. I'm Jamie, and today we're heading for the stars in our first ever LEGO Space Series, the Mtron Retrospective. The 90s were a treasure trove of super rad space themes like Blacktron 2, Explorians, Space Police, Ice Planet 2002, etc, etc. And I definitely want to review each and every one of them eventually, but I thought we'd start with a true fan favorite. Emtron hit store shelves in 1990, and in the US, they were marketed as space miners, but elsewhere they were portrayed as an emergency response unit, as seen in this vintage stop motion clip, rescuing their fellow interstellar explorers. Stay tuned till the end of the review to check out this awesome promo video in its entirety. Emtron's big gimmick was the prolific inclusion of magnets, which of course, is what the M stands for. Now, magnets had been around for a long time in the train sets, as early as the 1960s, but to my knowledge, this was the first time they were widely available in a variety of sets, including the one we're going to look at today, 6923 Particle Ionizer. It contains 203 pieces, one minifigure, and retailed for $24 in the US. This packaging is some of my favorite that LEGO has ever produced. There's just something about the artwork and photography that really grabs my attention. And on the back, we're treated to some awesome alternate builds. I especially like this one, looking like a sleek, high-tech starfighter. And this model uses an interesting technique with the available parts to form a space crane. But let's go ahead and check out the main build. Every set released in the Mtron sub-theme shared this same basic color scheme predominantly red and black, with trans-neon green windscreens and a few bits of light gray thrown in here and there. This makes for a really nice cohesive display when you've got all the Mtron sets together. But before we get into the ship itself, let's get acquainted with her pilot. And the simple truth is, if you've seen one Mtron minifigure, you've seen them all. Each one is identical to the next, with black helmet, neon green visor, classic smiley face, a red torso with printed Mtron logo, and white pants. And finishing him off is a pair of oxygen tanks. There was one minifigure that came with a jetpack, although he wasn't included in any official Mtron sets, but rather a space minifigure pack. I gotta say it does look cool having an Mtron clone army, Although it would have been nice to have two or three variations of the figure. Luckily, that's super easy to achieve just by swapping out a few heads. Now that we've met the pilot, let's meet his mode of transportation. The particle ionizer has a pretty interesting design as far as spaceships go. We all know how much LEGO loves their helicopters, but I think this may be the first time we've ever seen a space copter, with this spinning rotor up top made mainly of some trans-neon green antennae. This is also able to tilt forward a bit thanks to being built on a hinge brick. And I love this little detail of these small intakes connected to the engine by rubber hoses. Up front, the nose features a small laser gun, also hinged for more precise aiming, and then we've got the single-seater cockpit. Inside, there's a printed control panel tile, which we'll see many times throughout this series, and an interesting little way of representing what I assume is meant to be some sort of display. No flight yokes or proper seat here though, so there's a bit of room for customization. There are a pair of winglets on either side, adorned with another print we're going to see quite a few times, a 2x2 red tile with the Mtron logo. Behind the cockpit are a few clips, one on each side, holding a wrench and a walkie-talkie. The main wings are swept forward, which is always a cool design I think. They each have a laser mounted on the tip, and they're built on these nicely printed hinge panels. And raising them up gives us access to a storage compartment where we'll find... our pilot's helping hand. Brick belt robots were used prolifically throughout the early space sets, and I actually prefer these over robots that rely on more specially molded elements. He has quite a bit of articulation due to the hinge brick that makes up his legs, and his arms and antennae are also adjustable. Thanks to the clips, he can hold various tools and assist the pilot with any needed repairs or tasks. Above the robot's compartment, we'll find the crane. Instead of the typical hook we'd normally see, 
There's a magnet here, and that's connected to this large container unit. If we extend the boom, the whole thing comes out of its dock and gives us access to a tool rack on one side, featuring a hammer and a space wrench, which is actually the same element used for the robot's arms. And on the opposite side, we've got one of these hinge bars, an antenna, and a storage compartment with printed door. Inside, we'll find this very cool trans neon green element that looks like the bottom of a rocket. There are a few of these scattered throughout the different Mtron sets, and I think they're meant to represent some sort of power source. When you're ready to pick this back up, simply extend the crane and pull it up and back into place. It isn't actually attached to any studs, but thanks to the strength of the magnet and a pair of bar slopes, you don't have to worry about it falling back out. These twin vertical stabilizers are built on hinges, so you can adjust them to your liking, straight up and down, at an angle, or flat. Personally, I think I prefer the angled look. Two more printed Mtron slopes sit below them, and lastly, we have these black thruster pieces, acting as both landing gear and a form of propulsion. The rest of the model just sits on these 2x2 round plates. The Mtron theme as a whole is a great collection of visually appealing sets, ripe for adventure into the great beyond, and the particle ionizer doesn't do anything to detract from that. I really appreciate all the printed elements, total lack of stickers, and of course the magnetic feature. The theme is also highly collectible, sought after by many longtime LEGO Space fans for its interesting aesthetic and fantastic selection of vehicles. And that being the case, the secondary market prices you'll see can seem fairly high. This set, generally speaking, goes for about $40 used, and many times that new. And it's currently one of the better values of the collection, so it's a great place to start if you fancy adding Mtron to your LEGO shelf. But that's all for today. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to leave a like, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We're going to be taking a look at every single Mtron set LEGO ever produced, and even one that wasn't officially produced, so you're not going to want to miss an episode. But until next time, this has been Jamie for Trick Bricks. Feel free to sit back and enjoy this awesome promo video from 1990, and as always, thanks for watching. Take care, and play well! Oh, you're going to have to be broke. You're going to have to be broke.